Ooh. Oh. Uh -oh. Ta-da! Hey everybody, we're going live with, uh, this is going to be essentially my Sunday stream, even though I'm starting it now at, uh, well, almost 10 o'clock p.m. on Saturday night. I couldn't sleep tonight, so I uh, decided I might as well go ahead and start the stream, because I know I'm not going to make it back on time in the morning. I am firing up Photoshop right now. We're going to start with page 28 of the coloring book, which I did a little bit of doodling on today. So we've got that going on. Uh, I've got some stuff laid out in here uh, once I get the page open. Here we go. It's loading up. All right. So it's kind of a, a weird looking mess at the moment, but we're going to sort this out. So we've got the cleric is the main focus of this page and she's swinging her mace and uh destroying the undead magic going on and everything uh her her holy magic that's gonna uh what do you call it like just annihilate these undead but i'm also going to go ahead and open up uh my page 26 and 27 the two-page spread that we recently did so I can use that as a reference while I'm working on this and of course most of that's going to be off or like half of it will be off the screen but that's it's for me uh, to reference things as and help set up the two pages so they look about right okay and let me try one last thing here. I know the music's going pretty good. There we go. Um, so I'm trying to make sure I've got music that's playing on the stream. This should be loud enough for you to hear it. And uh, I've got to crank it down in my headset because it was just way too loud for me. But... Uh, this music is copyright free beats provided by hose on, on fire or hose on fire or something like that but it is or it's in the video description uh for their uh their requirements uh so it's the whole soundtrack that's put together by that artist and you can check them out on instagram and youtube they have their own channel for copyright free beats uh let's see so what I've got going on here is uh, I sketched things out. Let me go ahead and turn this stuff off real quick. So I had this stuff all sketched out. Then I shrunk it down, crammed it over where I wanted it, um, and started breaking everybody down into their own areas. But we're going to go ahead and refine everything now. Uh, so we're going to start with... Uh, Let's see all of these layers that I laid in I'm gonna cut them down to 60% I'm gonna put a new layer on the cleric merge down and what I'm doing is turning down the flow of my brush so that it can be a little bit more sketchy and let's zoom in a little bit um, so here's the thing I, I kind of liked how I had everything going with this sketch but I feel like her arm like she's not really cranking that uh, that mace as hard as I want it want her to so I'm going to go ahead and use my lasso and I'm just going to take her arm right here along with the mace pivot point over here into the elbow area and I'm gonna really crank that arm up like that and send it out like there 
maybe a little bit less. Just kind of trying to put that in where I want it to be like she would made a good hard swing and if anything she'll be coming back uh, in a moment with like a reverse swing. Alright, so how's this gonna look? I'm just checking to see... Okay. So let's work on getting her set up. Oh, uh, first thing, the cleric is six heads tall. So let's go ahead and complete her face here. shoulder being cranked up like that. Come back to her collarbone. And it's gonna her arm or her shoulder will of course uh, overlap her face just a little bit right there. down about like this. Alright, so it might actually need to be a little bit lower there. and stuff on there too so that's gonna come into play before long And we'll end up uh, fine-tuning how certain things work here as I go along. Um, let's see. Um, I feel like maybe this is just a little bit too much. Just smooth that out a bit more.
coming down into the knee. I've got all this stuff like um, showing through. We'll turn that layer off. Alright. So this hand is actually a little bit too high up. We'll go ahead and bring it down to about there. trying to do here is just make sure that her hand has at least a little bit of the appearance of being tilted in space because I don't want it to be like flat I want it to be angled back a little bit and I don't like the tip of that finger being out the way it was. Do that. And I really don't like that huge separation between those knuckles either. Maybe a little bit less. So the wrist would actually be like right here. I feel like having this at 100% opacity is not working out quite the way I want it to. I'm going to take it down to 80%, and but I'm still running with 25% flow. Because this is like the pencil sketch, so I don't want it to be perfectly smooth and 100% black. I want it to have you know, some of this... Um, general pencil look to it um, okay we've got her laid in and oh now I could just reference the character off of this page but I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my uh, actual reference for her as well and let me see what is there a three up? Yes, there is. Good. Okay, so now we've got three different things we're looking at. So we've got the last page, the reference, and the actual drawing that we're working on now. Um, but what if we change these around? Um, okay. Uh, I'm not sure how the, if this is going to work the way I want it to or not. Nope, that didn't go the way I wanted it to. Let's try putting that there. There we go. That way the drawing we're working on is in the middle. I can go to this side for the reference, that side for the last page. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and make 
this the biggest part of the thing too. So there we go. Now let's zoom in a little bit. And I'm gonna kind of like skip over her head for now. I'm gonna go straight into the clothes. So let's see. Right. So she's got a collar on her outfit. It comes together right here. rises up quite that much. I'm going to go ahead and just have it go under her chin. It, depending on how you turn your head, it might actually wrap along her chin, but I don't think it's going to stick out that far, so we don't really want to do that. Uh, let's see. This is here. She has that large medallion on her chest. We'll go ahead and bring that in right here. of how she's turned we'll see the side of it right there the, the thickness of it and then let's see this it's gonna cut across here like so I'm just working on the sweeping lines that we're gonna get from her clothes her uh, shoulder cowl thing here is going to come out. And so that sticks out a little bit around her arm area. And then it'll drop down. And in the front, it kind of has an angle to it. So that's where we are overlapping the face just a little bit because the shoulder is closer to us than the face. It will maintain a little bit of thickness here in this piece of cloth. as it gets to the center. Let's keep the center right here. And we will bring it 
back. The belt should have some thickness to it. So it's going to be on the form and wrapping around. And then of course she has this large medallion in the belt or on it. Right about here. So I'm just sketching out that large circular form. And because of where this is at, you won't actually see either of the sides. And that covers her belly button as well. Then in her torso, this uh, outfit she wears has a split to it, so let's see, it stays the same size, but uh, yeah, we'll just follow that curve right there, and then do same thing right over here, and we'll actually use that line right there. We're definitely getting someplace with this uh, character. Let's go back up here and work on, we're gonna put in the gloves. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so, her gloves are like really loose at the back and more form fitting up, up near the hands. And she is swinging that, uh, mace of hers so I'm gonna go ahead and carry this glove down about like so and this will also go down here so that's all loose glove material swinging in the, in the wind of her motion there and then the glove comes right here and it becomes larger as we go. And I'm filling out the form that I think that should take. then we don't need all of that line of her forearm because the glove has its own line. And let me put that back in there. Oh, hold on a second. All right. Okay, so what's going on here is that the glove, it does have all of this um, extra material, but actually I think it should be more back here. More of just a smooth line. But it's going to have essentially this wavy wrinkle to it, and then the rest of the material you're gonna, is gonna be beyond that, that wrinkle line that we're gonna get right there. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, so she has trim along the back edge of this glove. We'll put this in and try to keep it following the form. Put it to right there. And then bring it down like so. So maybe that 
wrinkle will actually be caused by the trim itself. And carry it through on the inside of the glove. But of course, she has billowy sleeves, which we need to add in. We'll go with like an armhole right here in her, we'll call it a tunic. Uh, and then the sleeves themselves, they just kind of billow out and they tuck into the gloves. So let's say, um, well, across here, there might be a little bit of a wrinkle here. The cloth might bunch up here a little bit. So at that point, we're starting to cover up that medallion a little bit with the uh, cloth of this arm, of this sleeve, rather. is stretched out um, I mean it's bent at the elbow but that means the back edge of the cloth is stretched a little bit um, as she swings so this side should be probably smoother than the uh, upper side where it, the cloth is bunching up in the fold into her upper arm that should create a wrinkle there should probably be some right here maybe a little bit more of one here I could probably carry that a little bit more we'll take one here and another one right here. Not that one though. Hmm. I think I might put just a little bit more of one in right there. Just so enough to suggest the uh, flow of this sleeve and how it's bunched up right here with the uh, you know with the pinch of the arm at the uh, inside of the elbow. Okay, so then that leaves everything else here, all nice and done. We're coming down into. Uh, Oh, right. So that's the abdomen part. Then coming across her breast is the other line, which would be more like, let's say right here. And we'll make that just show up about like that. And that probably would actually also exist down here. just a little bit more so that it 
uh, flows a little bit better. We can zoom out just a little bit here. So now we're getting into the uh, the gown and everything, which should of course be kind of exciting, f dynamic, flowing. Uh, let's see, so we're going to have this coming out back here. She is stepping forward and swinging and turning, so let's kind of make it flow outward like this. And then for this side, it's going to do essentially the same thing. Um, but it might kind of hug the form just a little bit more. The trim line. And then the back edge of it here. So of course, that zombie I have sketched out back there. We're not going to be able to see that character um, if we stick with this. We just we just get part of the head, which so we might have to adjust that, move that character around a little bit. Uh, let's see. So then, again, this leg is coming forward, and she has this uh, loincloth type thing going on. The, the robes underneath of her outer robe. So let's see. I'm going to go ahead and follow this line. I'm going to make this one kind of flowy right here. So I'm going to get rid of that initial line we had for her hips. I'm going to carry this just like so. And so this uh, loincloth is kind of tucked back behind this forward thrusting leg. And then from the other side, it's flowing downward and probably flowing back a little ways as well. So we'll create some more wrinkles here. And we don't need this groin line anymore. I'll go ahead and put in a wrinkle here and maybe another one right here. That should be plenty. So then this loincloth actually comes down pretty much all the way to her feet. Uh, so what we're going to do is carry that flowing back here. blowing right there but it also comes around the sides and to the back so the next piece of it I'm gonna have flared out <clears throat> like so This piece, I'm going to make it dark up here, 
because this is at the back. And then it's going to have some folds in it that are coming down out of the shadow. Now, right here, we've got, um, that's actually a, a spine chunk from the skull that's uh, being knocked off in front of her. So we'll need to uh, keep her cleared out of that form. Now on the other side, you probably won't see any of that. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of the hip lines over here and the thigh. Because all of that is covered by the robe. But now we're moving down to the knees where her knee pads are. And I've turned those into sort of a pointy egg type shape. So they are very much rounded at the bottom and then they're pointy at the top and we want to make sure that this form expands beyond the uh, shape or beyond the outline of the leg same thing on the back leg and clean off that so let's see where we're at now there we go so she's got um sort of a little bit of a dynamic pose here and uh, the different forms are coming into play um, oh we need to do the boots so her boots are um, they kind of make sort of an M shape in the trim flares out here comes down the trim itself it does follow the curve of that knee pad and then also that arc of the boot But what makes it have a real, or really makes it look like it has the M shape is here in the center, it has this spike that comes down. Okay, we gotta get rid of the, uh, the lines that I drew for the thigh, or not the thigh, the calves. That's that. Okay. And then we'll do the same thing over here. So there's that curve following. That. We'll flare the boot out and then bring it down along the shin. the calf and of course the one in front should have a heavier line than the one in the back Now 
we could probably fill that with black back there, just to kind of help knock everything down. All oh, right, that's um, right, that's her loincloth wrapping right there. And it might even work better if this line isn't connected. Maybe we'll just leave it like that. Because anytime I connect a line, it could separate a one form from another. And we might not be looking to separate certain forms. Uh, like within the uh, cloth, you don't necessarily want to separate one wrinkle from the rest of the, the cloth unless it's um, like a very defined form. Like we want to keep this side, this piece that's go wrapping around the forward leg, we want to keep that in front of the other stuff, but uh, you know. Little things like that are cool. Other areas, like this is trim. Well, that's not trim because that's inside. So I could, but it is, it's a folded over thing. Um, so yeah, I want to keep that solid. That separates the interior from the ex that exterior that's folded over. We could put a little bit more shadow there. Okay. And of course, then all of this out here that we're looking at, that is inside the very rear of this uh, gown as it flares out. So I'm going to fill that in with black right here. And the only reason I'm going around the shape of that skull is because it is on top of this character, it like closer to us. And that's the easiest way to uh, keep that clear for now. Same thing over here, there's um, the rib cage that that skull belongs to. And this side I'm going to go ahead and fill completely with black. And when I do like the sketchiness in here, I know when I get to the inking stage, that's all just supposed to be black. I don't have to actually worry about making it exactly black just yet. I'm going to go ahead and deepen this along here, and then maybe put, so now I'm going into the skull just to carry a form a little bit further than what I'm going to leave it visible as. Sometimes it's best to draw things through just to make sure you get that flow going. Okay. So this character is almost done. Um, we've got the mace to do and then her face and her hair. So let's zoom in again. And we're gonna go ahead and use this mace as a reference. So let's see, we've got this, uh, what do you want to call it, like a metal cap that uh, comes in at the end, then this actually flares out in a circle, And that circle becomes wider at the uh, bottom. Let's 
maybe not quite so big as I just drew it. We're gonna work on this a little bit here. this out okay and then it actually has a sphere that sits inside this metal form Really, it kind of feels like um, this thing might be a little bit smaller than it should be. So let's just take this. And bring it out here just about that far. stretch this. would have been easier for me just to catch the thing in. But there we go. Now that handle's probably about the right length from the back of her hand. This should probably have a little bit more space to it. So let's kind of like bring this up. some knuckles here. Then the mace itself has this um, ore that's inside of it. You just kind of put in some of those tracer lines. rough. Okay. 
Now another thing that's going on back here is that um, this cleric has called upon her uh, deity or patron or whatever, her source of power, and she's got this golden energy that is allowing her to smite these undead. So we're going to go ahead and put that power, that magic, in here. And I want that more rounded. There we go. She's got this magic going on around her mace. We're getting places here. It's kind of looking decent, but of course, um, she needs hair and features, and she is an elf, so she's got big ears too. Then we'll have to start worrying about these undead that are around her and uh, all the other stuff that's going on. Now, let's see. Yeah, let's jump right into that face. We're going to go 100% here. And my reference photo, or my, my reference compilation over there, that's got... Um, it's kind of low resolution, um, so there's not a whole lot of reference, or not a whole lot of resolution to it that I can work with. Oh, and I should probably zoom out just a bit on that. So let's see. Now, I'm going to go ahead and make her eyebrow area like very pointy this time. Because you figure she should be like filled with righteous anger as she works on smiting these uh, undead. I'm just trying to fit all of her forms in right here and make them look about right. get to that all right let's see here so come back to the jaw and so I have her ears yeah her ears connect more like around where her mouth is should come 
more like that. And they angle upwards. They don't actually go beyond her hair. Top line, nice smooth swoop. I think I might have made it a little narrow. Okay, of course that line's going out of there. the hard edge right there at the um, hinge of, or not the hinge, but the uh, back edge of the jaw. Sometimes it's a little tricky because if we do it with too much of an outline, then it looks like she's got like a big uh, malformed nose, and we don't want that. We might actually just have to break that. Maybe put a little bit of that top in there. We're, we're like pushing it just a little bit here.
Now her eyebrows are thicker at the center than they are like as you get further out. We'll bring this one in like right here. And I think that I've just got too much of like a hard form out there. So I'm gonna make that a little bit more of a soft curve going up to that. And then this eyebrow, will bring it back a little bit here. Instead of trying to draw hairs, I'm probably just going to go ahead and leave it um, as a shape, like an outline. Then we'll say her eye is there. It probably runs to about there. Now her mouth should actually run to about there and to about there with the center line of it being like right around there. So let's take out the lips that I drew already because I didn't like those to begin with. And let's think about this. So, Try bringing it in right here. leave just that one line there and have her lips or her mouth be closed um, but actually I think I want it to be open get rid of that split between the upper and lower lip just to simplify it a little bit make it look a little bit more natural and get rid of that little bit of curve that I actually had in the chin right there ought to be able to see her bottom teeth there for sure and we might even see just a little bit of her upper teeth as well and 
I don't want to outline every tooth. If I'm going to weave them in there, I just want to have just a little bit of hint of them. And let's see, back here. Let's do that. Let that angle more. And I might intensify that cheekbone just along the back edge there. Let's take a look at how this is going. Let's zoom out a bit. And so her eyes are like really angled and I don't like that. But that's fairly easy to fix. I'm going to take this. I'm just going to angle it down a little bit. And I can probably do the same thing over here. actually on this one maybe I should angle it up just a touch She has pupils and irises. We'll put those in. Now let's see how this is looking. All right, still very angled, but it's less. It's not quite as bad. And a lot of it is the face has that hard angle to it. Um, which is probably wrong. Okay. So what we're going to do is smooth that out a little bit more. This is going to look really bad for a minute. Because what we're doing is trying to get rid of that harsh angle that I just, that I have in that face right now.
and then let's see so that's going across there there all right a little bit to level that out a little bit maybe bring it up a bit more okay need to zoom out again yeah so now it's looking a little bit more level and like it's supposed to let me tweak this eye one more time out there okay So then her head should be about level all the way across there. Now we got to do some hair. All right. Let's take a look at what I got going on over here. Yeah. So her hair parts along that back edge that we're not seeing here. some curls that are coming in um, but let's say her actual hairline would be something like right here It'd flow around like that I've got too much eyebrow ridge over there still. down kind of like a sideburn right there right in front of the ear and then as far as back 
here. Now, let's think. Um, so, she is twisting around to the uh, front. Um, you know, where that she's swinging that mace behind her, but her head is turning the other way. So, I'm gonna say her hair might be kind of whipping out that away. cover up a lot of that magic coming from the mace. But we should have some going on over here. Let's get zoomed back in and sort this out. And at this point, I'm gonna close down the reference sheet. Yeah, 100% is just a little too big for me at this time. We're going to get rid of that little bit of magic that was back there. Because that is just, uh, it's creating like a little weird tangent that we don't necessarily want. What's up?
Alrighty. So we're back to it here. Um, okay, so I gotta bring this hair together in the two different directions, and I don't like the way that was going. Let's do a smaller bit there, another bit here. And then maybe bring this bit down like so. for the hair and have it actually look kind of good here. Uh, what if I take one and bring it through right there? So then we're back to the same thing. That little bit of the magic shape was just like a weird tangent that you wouldn't necessarily know what to do with with your coloring. Okay, we're gonna get rid of some of these. Okay, then we've got this one right here. that curving down this bit is coming out like so a lot of that magic but we still have a good bit of it there so we'll clear out that bit of the magic there bring this line in carry it up like that clean that out down here and I could probably just stick with uh, some rough form right there bring some more of it into her neck and then let the neck flow out into the collar you fill in the color there with black. And 
and right here we can do something a little similar. Um, in fact, let's break this line. Okay, and we might even break another line right there. This might actually be crossing just a wee bit too deep in to the neck. You just want to make sure that it looks like the hair comes from her neck without um, going too overboard with it. So then there's this piece here. This could be a nice smooth line, I think. See how this is looking. Yeah, so she's got it looks like hair, right? Oh, go ahead, honey. Now is right here. Her hair is just kind of um it, it was feeling like it just kinda ended right there. So let's do this. Maybe break that. Keep that one solid. thing that we need in this character some detail in her ear so we've got that nice smooth upper line for the ear and I can trim down that back line a little bit
I don't really want to put a lot of form in there. Let's just get that out of there. All you really need is that little bit of um, outer lining to kind of tell you what, what the ear looks like. half here we got her all laid in um and now we can start working on the background so what i've got in this thing is the stairwell from the last pages with all these zombies coming out of it and let me go to the background layer what I'm gonna do, stretch that a little bit more. Yeah, let's go like that. Okay. I like the way that um, kind of accentuates everything, brings it all together. Could slide it over some more, but I'm gonna leave it over there. Okay. Now, what I'm gonna do though is real quick, I'm gonna take out my background lines that are inside the hair and the magic. Inside her body, inside her hand. Although I'm gonna end up coming back to that. Yeah, let's just let's put in these essential lines first. Then we'll come back and wipe stuff out. Okay, so that's already there. I guess I don't really need to worry too much about keeping this um Perfect. All right. So yeah, I'll only worry about, uh, I'll try not to actually take anything else into the character. How about that? And I'm gonna pull these lines out. Some of those lines I ended up separating into um, other layers. So there's one, two, three, four stairs. One, two, three, four. This is the ground. Um, but yeah, so some of these, uh, some of those lines that you can see in there were, they're on different layers right now because of how I laid out the initial sketch and then chopped pieces up to make the individual layers for separating this thing out. So I'm just gonna go through here and try to pull out any background lines that are inside the character. Oh, okay, so we don't want any of those that's inside the skirt or the, the gown as it billows out. Okay. So 
so she is looking pretty powerful here, doing her thing. Um, oh, but one last thing before I quit on her. I'm going to go ahead and do a circle here. like we did around the mace, but this is being emitted from her hand. I'm just sketching it out, getting a general round form to it. Same thing as with the mace. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna draw some lines. that right there um yeah that's better that way we can see more of the magic right there i think i'm gonna leave that one that background um, I could work on things uh, in front of the background first um, but I just want to kind of get these bricks in place around the door frame so let's see like particularly right here oh yeah I'm on the background okay cool thought I was on the wrong layer
so I want to make sure that these bricks go into place and look relatively the same as they did on the last page. They don't have to be perfect, but if I've got some, like, uh, very pronounced forms, that I want to mimic those enough that, you know, most people wouldn't even notice that there's a difference. But now I'm going to have like zombies that are going to be covering up some of these bricks uh, with their bodies coming out into the uh, the area. Like I've got that one with the helmet that's back behind the cleric. We're going to have to move that zombie so that it doesn't get completely lost. And I'm only going to put a few zombies in here, but this is the scene where the cleric is essentially all powered up and wiping out the undead. Now on this side, we're really only putting in a few of these bricks because most of them are covered by uh, by her hair, by the mace. Um, let's see, so you're not even gonna see this line here. There's that's just the very bottom, and the inside of this would be coming along right here. Had some fog going on in there, so we'll go ahead and continue that. Let's see, it should be probably like right around this level here. Maybe some low level fog there. Okay. And how much of that still shows up? is going to be kind of dependent on what goes in front. Ow. Now I'm sketching in more of this scribbly black. In the final version that might be all black. For 
now I'm content just to kind of scribble it in there. It doesn't have to be perfect. lines inside or outside that form I can always fix that in the ink and I know what I know what I want to do there uh, when I get to the inking stage so that's all fine this area. Okay. Where are we at? We're at less than two hours. We're getting there. But we've already got a pretty decent page going. And if I didn't need to include the undead in this thing, we'd be done already, and this could go go to inks and I can jump onto page 29 but I do want to include those undead and some more details actually so what I'm gonna do now is add in some shadow right here that I'm gonna draw right through the cleric this is what I think I was talking about earlier um, because I needed to I wanted to continue those lines as uh, accurately as possible so I just took them right through her and I'll just erase them where they don't show up anymore which like this one right here was completely unnecessary beyond a certain point because you don't see anything over there All right, now we can fill those in. just a little bit of a shadow that's caused by the uh, basically like the lip of the step imagine those steps have like a little bit of a lip around the uh, front edge of them we'll just erase that line right out of those fingers over here it's crossing into the magic we'll get rid of that And 
and that's not on the background layer. That is. Okay, let's go over to the other side here. So we can see it in here. This is that shadow under the lip. We can clear these lines out of that. Uh, Uh, out of the breasts or skirt or whatever and like I said we're gonna move that zombie um, the zombie is on a different layer so I don't have to worry about going through it right here That little bit added a whole lot of uh, depth to the background. Now, my zombie. I'm gonna bring her up to about right there. And I'm gonna make her larger. don't want her to be quite as big as the cleric. There we go. And I'm gonna just kind of doodle this in real quick so her elbow would be like right here. wrist might be up here like if her arm is like this a hand zombie fingers um Now we can turn the background off while we work on this to uh, be able to facilitate it just a little bit better. And let's see. So that one finger just kind of went, it made that one way thicker than the rest of them. And of course, there's a lot of this zombie back here that's behind that cowl, to, or behind that uh, skirt. But this is the zombie we're working on. So we're gonna put her in. And, oh, all right. So here's a detail that I missed. This hand doesn't exist. She has a nub. So we gotta take that out. So her arm comes down to her elbow and then she's literally got like a bone. Just a nasty bone sticking out. Um, so you're not, so she can't actually do anything with that arm. I don't think I want to make that visible. I'm just going to leave it. So we'll cut that off right there. Uh, let's see. 
Now this is like a, a tiara type thing that she's wearing. This is coming across right here. That's the center line of her head. Oh, okay. I was wondering why I couldn't get this to go like 100% black in my sketching. There is a reason. It's because I knocked this layer and I knocked the background layer down to 60% uh, opacity. And I forgot to actually lay another layer on top of it. Um, so I could, my new stuff would be fully opaque. But that's okay. It's not a big deal. Uh, it's just something that was going on, and I didn't realize why it was happening. Alright. So, we've got this tiara that she's wearing. It terminates, like, right here. It has to have some thickness to it. Now, as it comes along the side, it flares out. Into something of a ring. And these horns have like a mount that flares out of it. And then the horn comes out of it. So right here. Yeah. did make that a little bit more of just a rounded form. There we go. So then we could do the same thing over here, make a slight adjustment to this. So it won't be quite so big there. And then the tiara has a large rounded component to it. And her hair is this curly mass. So this zombie, it's hard to say. Um, she might have been fairly fresh to still have like intact hair. Okay. Uh, let's see, let's get in here to the face. The eyes are here, the nose is here, the mouth is here. Now the eyes are literally going to be shooting out golden light. She had a big nose. Mm -mm. Let me chop. 
pop in here, get rid of the center line, and figure out this nose. It's about like that. But what I want to do here is, um, she is being taken out by magic. So that golden light is like emanating from her eyes. those areas but uh, maybe we'll do just a little bit of this <laughs> and the same thing would be happening with her mouth wide open zombie mouth Might even just kind of overlap that a little bit. We are two hours into this four hour stream and I don't know I mean given where we're at now uh, I've only got a few more characters to put in here uh, it may not take the whole four hours to finish this page which is cool than most of the other armor I've done so far. It's got one ball back here on the back side and another one like up it's out of view over there. And she's got this piece of chain mail or sort of like chain mail uh, dress that is covering up her breasts. 
So I'm just going to put some of that in there. Put a little bit of that there. All right, and that character is added. If I turn the background back on, what we can do is actually add a layer mask. And on this layer mask, um, what I'm gonna do is just kind of paint out these areas. Like this is where the characters, that light is shooting. So it'll kind of look like I the way I'm doing this with a less than um, fully opaque brush, it kind of looks like I just took an eraser across there, like on paper, and tried to knock that down a little bit. And yeah, that's fine for now. I think that'll do just fine, actually. down sure it still shows up a little bit but I'll know that that has been erased somewhat so it shouldn't be showing through all right now let's take a look I'm thinking I think that I'm gonna just leave her like that um, and probably not include any of these other zombies um, just because of the space and the clutter that it would cause so we've got one memorable one and there's something going on back there uh, we're gonna jump to the uh, skeleton in the foreground And so, yeah, let's go ahead and start working on him. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just rotate that upside down like that. Oh, and I don't need my brush to be that big. This is the better center line. We're gonna put the eyes along this line. Nose here, mouth right here. Okay. Now I'm gonna have the same situation that I had with that other character, but my brush is not going to 100% black. Um, and the reason why is because this layer is set to a maximum opacity of 60%. And I could fix that, but yeah, I really don't care um, as far as the pencil thing goes, because this is just to get everything kind of laid in so that um, I can ink it later. do kind of care about is that um, like we've got the cleric showing through the skull but I figured I might as well get the skull laid in first before I worry about um, like how much to of her uh, 
gown and stuff to actually blank out for that. But now let me go to the cleric, put a layer mask on there. this up so I can do this faster. Right? Yeah, okay. So I am getting rid of those cleric lines right now anywhere that they don't seem like they belong. And I just decided a moment ago that uh, this guy his um, what do you call it uh, his jaw is going to be broken off. So let's see go ahead and clean him up a little bit. Get rid of some of these lines. general form all right and let's rotate back over here to the right way around so like his skull is there his ribs are there I'm just gonna go ahead and put his jaw like right here I'm going to go ahead and paint out all of her lines that are within that. There we go. Go back to the skeleton. Take this back down to 10. So we're looking at some teeth across here. Jog be hinged up there. Okay. And again, teeth there, back to the cleric. Paint out those lines that are coming through those teeth. Nothing too complex there. But then we also have like part of his spine there and his whole rib cage is down here. Hey. 
and because I'm doing all of this, um, like erasing on a layer mask, I'm not actually destroying any of the art that I already drew. Uh, that's leaving it, uh, in place in case I change my mind. Okay. So, like I said, I got that chunk of, uh, his spine there. And there's another chunk of it right here. got some of those lines that were in the background um, when I initially sketched I brought those in there with the uh, lines of the skeleton and that's why they are still on there okay and that's another one right there and right there okay And collarbone there. And I'm not too worried about getting, like, making this rib cage, like, perfect. Uh, I just want it to convey the general idea that it is his rib cage and collarbones. Let's see. We're gonna go ahead and put like a rib here. We'll leave a little bit of a gap right there. Put another one there. Do the same thing over here. Fill that gap in with black. And then this is the sternum, which kind of wraps around each of these ribs. That's where they all attach to. And we'll go back to the cleric and do that little bit of paint out. So that her lines don't interfere too much with his lines. Okay, back to the skeleton. So if this is that, then we need like, uh, shoulder blade back here and maybe continue the ribs around he has a spine so let's put some chunky spine bones in here we'll clear that one out
Okay, so the cleric's robes would be coming in there. Gotta make sure which one, which part of this is actually a bone and which part's not. That should be filled in with black. Alright, we'll get rid of this line out here. I might, yeah, flare this a little bit more, give it some thickness. And just kind of try to maintain some fairly heavy line back there, since he is up front. Alright, so now we've got the skeleton and the zombie being slaughtered. And like I said, we could fill this whole thing in with dying skeletons and zombies, but it'll just become cluttered. So I don't really want to do that. Um... But I will go ahead and put, oops, one more, I'm going to put a skull back here. Oh, okay, and let me get rid of that line. I'm going to put that on the zombies layer. So I'm going to put this skull right here. It's obviously smaller than the other one. Let's be looking down. right there that's crossing through into the skull. Paint out that little bit there. All good. That should be enough. That, that's that got everything going on. And so I'm going to go ahead and call that page done as far as the pencils go. And I'll be coming back to this uh, later on uh, again to ink it. Is I have to ink everything from I think page 20 or 21 on. To the end of the book save the changes we can close this page down that is that is a two-page spread uh, that was finished last the pages 26 and 27 where the battles going on so we have the cleric out here she was charging up zombies pouring through that doorway skeletons popping up out of the ground everybody's fighting lots of that excitement and stuff going on so this is a 32 page coloring book um, we just finished drawing page 28 um, so we've only got four more pages to go you've seen uh, you, we were focused on one character but I have several characters uh, in this book that uh, and they're all right here really as you got the cleric uh, barbarian, ranger, a gnome barbarian, a drow paladin, tiefling paladin, goblin wizard, human wizard, dwarf fighter, and a goblin barbarian. That's, yeah, that's all of the 11 characters uh, that I've included so far. And there might even be one or two more making us little appearance like right in the end as I uh, touch up and rewrite things but let's close that down so we just finished page 28 time to go to page 29 
Okay, I've got a doodle here. What was I doing? So the bad guys are going to be running away, and I did sketch something out right here. I'm trying to figure out what I'm looking at for sure. Um... What do we got? This would be my tiefling paladin running away. That's probably my human fight uh, barbarian. I'm gonna say that's. 